join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. time and this year we thought we had a permit but it wasn't granted so we're here to rifle hunt we'll be climbing the Caucasian mountains now for two weeks after our tour and all the other species we're rifle hunting in Russia it's gonna make a lot of noise at least at least, at least they won't jump the string Brasner 3378 is really very loud but it is very accurate too. Finally to Russia. We've been talking about Russia for about 15 years and we run out of time, so we came to hunt. Stay tuned, we're gonna hunt the Caucasian mountains. When in uh, Russia, do as the Russians do, right? <laughs> This is the famous Chagam Waterfalls. This beautiful canyon here is a major tourist attraction here in southern Russia, in the Caucasus Mountains. And there's literally hundreds of tourists here. They've got walkways and pathways, as you can see, going way up high in the cliffs. There's lots of mountain climbers here and some great little restaurants. And we're on our way to find a tour. The mid-Caucasian tour. The socks from pure wool cost only a dollar. We're very lucky. We just found our guides for the hunt. So we're all set. Stay tuned. We'll be back as we go to the Caucasus Mountains and hunt tour. We're going to have a great time here in Russia. On the way to our base camp, we stopped here to be instructed in safety procedures. That's obviously our tour mountain. It's pretty steep, but uh, you can see why you're gonna, we're going to have to be shooting long distance. It's really steep, steep country. But this is a beautiful lodge here in the middle of nowhere, so we're going to go check it out. To meet with the head of the hunting area and have a look around the interesting recreational facility which serves as the final observation post of the hunting areas. From the window, you could see the spectacular scenery of the surrounding Caucasus Mountains. This here is one of the most beautiful parts of the Caucasus Mountains, Chegemsky. <laughs> now we will have some tea and continue further. <laughs> Archie, Jaeger, Omar, 
Very ominous mountains in the background. I don't think we'll be scaling those. During the next hour, we rode the horses along a narrow trail, dug out by a powerful river, which looked, from the elevation at which we were, like a mountain creek. After a short break, on towards the peak again. It's a steep climb for the horses and heavy, heavy packs. I mean, it's really steep. And we go up through this chute. This time we led the horses on a leash because there was real danger of a deadly fall. The sleeping bag, which got untied from the saddle, rolled for a long time down the rocky scree. I was very grateful to our guide, Vladimir, that he went back down to retrieve it. Sat down for a break and uh, give my horse something to feed. We just broke over top and there's a, a male tur right here on the skyline. Low, very low. While we waited for our guide, we managed to locate two tur on the slope of the nearby mountain. Our mountain guide, Omar, made the decision to try to approach the tur, and I followed it. We noted the place where we had last spotted the tur and got up on the horses. One of the big problems you have in some of these foreign hunts is that the guides, no matter how many times they've guided people, they don't have binoculars. So my guide took my binoculars from the start and I never had them. And once he gave them to me to find the tur, but I'm sitting there with six power, he's got my 10 power, and my great Sarovsky. One of the great problems for me was finding the tur. And I could find the little one, I couldn't find the big one. And then when they started to move from the sun facing us, and that glare, it was just impossible. It looks like too far, that's what it looks like. And uh, this thing was 500 and 600, so that's a long ways. You know, it's first day, evening, we got all day, fine in the morning. The base camp would be in immediate closeness to the ruins of an ancient stone building. We quickly put up our tents and agreed to start on a reconnaissance trip early in the morning. Moving in good rhythm, and in 30 minutes, we were already on the crest, which offered a breathtaking panoramic view of the neighboring slopes. 
the Jaeger gave us a sign to lower ourselves before coming up to skyline. After the last hilltop, an interesting spectacle was awaiting us. Several goat were moving on the slope a kilometer from us. The distance was too far for a shot, even for my made-to-order Brasner. I could only follow with my eyes the virtuoso leaps of the goat over the bottomless abyss under their feet. We left the beautiful animals and continued along the slope. Although it did not look dangerous, the slope's inclination and the wet grass made slippery from the morning frost could send us into the abyss below in a second. We became even more cautious after our guide's story about the tragic incident which took the life of a famous hunter right here in this mountain. We did not make a step without checking that two of our three balance points were firmly on the ground. At the end of the ridge, the peak thinned out to only a few meters in width, and we had to crawl along an 80 degree slope which fell off a kilometer down over some pointed rocks. Notwithstanding the danger, our situation and position were rather convenient for observation. Completely prostate and at the same time almost erect. There was a heavy frost last night. It froze really hard. It's starting to melt now. But it's very, very slippery country. This grass gets wet and is slippery. They were saying that one of the famous guides got killed last year. He slipped and fell and went to the bottom. We're on a very, fairly nice slope here now, but the other side of the cliff here but the other side of the ridge is really, really steep. So you have to really be careful in this country. These Caucasian mountains have killed a lot of people. You don't wear anything slippery. 
you wear clothes that will at least give you some friction if you start to slide and you need to grab. If you set your pack down and it is off balance, it'll go right to the bottom. We had one bag come off a horse yesterday and it went right to the bottom. We had to go all the way back down. One of the guys had to go all the way back down and get it. The other thing is, today, today all I have is my rangefinder. I've got an adapter, spotting scope adapter with me, but I had to give my binoculars to one of the other guides who's gone off looking for tour somewhere else. So I'm without binoculars. Remember, bring a second pair of binoculars. You would think these guys in this country would have their own binoculars because they're guiding all the time and hunting all the time, but they don't. Always bring a second pair of binoculars and bring a spotting scope. You're gonna pay extra to the airlines now. They all charge you, charge you lots. But on this kind of hunt, you gotta have a spotting scope. You gotta have extra binoculars. That's just a mandatory requirement. Two guides are doing some spotting. They think there's a big male in the area. Looks like the tour come over that, out of the rocks, steep rocks, over onto the slope to feed. They were there this morning. We couldn't approach them. It would have spooked them. So they, two herds fed over top. Looks like there's males in each one. So we'll get up and get in position. Below us here in the valley are the cattle and sheep. And you can see the ancient old corrals and pens that old sheep herders have made, piling up and ga gather, gathering and piling up these huge rocks. Adamy, our guide, tried to make the tour show up if there was a herd below us. The falling rocks would surely make them come out of their cover in the rock niches. The eagles are, are those eagles? Yes. Eagles. Those kill the little babies. That's what they do. The stone fragments tumbling down in such a fascinating way did not seem to help us with the tour, but they were an impressive sight. The uneven rocks often created traps in which you could easily break your leg or sprain your ankle at a minimum. So this is either going to be good or it's instant death, right? Yes. Excellent vitamins. Good or, or instant death? <laughs> this is all? Okay, yeah. okay. Enjoy now. Mmm. We try to push animals from the forest because uh, before, like 10 days earlier, guys found a group of uh, totally like about 10 or 12 rams down below nearby forest. Thank you. 
Adamy, like a true mountaineer, know the edible wild fruit, and we, quite like the goat perched on the slope over a deep abyss, got so absorbed in collecting wild blueberries that we forgot where we were. Our morning reconnaissance hike was unsuccessful, although we had seen plenty of goat. However, our guide heard on the portable radio from the other Jaeger who was on the opposite ridge with the same reconnaissance mission that he had spotted a herd and there were several nice trophy animals in it. We would climb stone screes and stock tur, but you will have to see this in the next episode of Ultimate Shot.